Hey, church family and friends, I want to take a couple minutes to talk about the George Floyd situation. Um, in church yesterday, we've been in Psalm 27, verse 4, David loved to inquire in the temple. And I think um, what I'm gaining out of that is it's so good to be able to ask questions um, at church. And nobody should feel afraid to ask questions, any question at church. And so the question right now is, what do we do with the George Floyd situation? And so I wanted to speak to that today and um, the current situation with the police brutality. I've uh, been spending some time thinking about that, praying about that. Here's where I am with it. First of all, as a pastor of Christ Church, uh, my opinion doesn't really matter. Um, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And so what I think, what I my opinion doesn't matter, but what really does matter is what God's word says, and I can help you understand what God's word says regarding this. So um, what the Bible teaches, first of all, about race is the Bible teaches there's one race, the human race, right? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and God made them male and female. He made them according to his image and likeness. So there's, there's one race, the human race, um, that, that uh, is what's real. Um, Genesis chapter 3, right, the fall enters into the world. And after that, there's division, there's murder, there's envy, there's pride. It gets ugly really quick. Fast forward to Genesis chapter 11, and there's the Tower of Babel, where God spreads out the people in different languages that form into different cultures all over the world. And culture's really neat stuff, right? Where it's, it's exciting, there's, there's good parts of culture, there's bad parts of culture, um, there's funny parts of culture. When I worked down in Southern California at Grace Community School, we had Armenian kids and black kids and Hispanic kids and Asian kids and white kids and other kinds of kids. And, and, and the, these junior high kids, they just enjoyed it. And we celebrated the different cultures and had a lot of fun with it. And um, I think it was in God's design how it should be handled. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about is uh, we have an enemy, uh, Satan. Satan's name, uh, the devil, Diabolos in Greek. Diabola means to throw through. So we have an enemy that's constantly dividing us, constantly getting people to take sides and have division against each other. Um, Ephesians 6 says our battle isn't against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. And so there's always a pressure um, to take sides. And I just want to encourage you that the truth doesn't have sides. The truth doesn't have a side. The truth is truth. Um, and in this case, right, where we see Black Lives Matter, of course, Black Lives Matter. And it's sad to me that people would even have to say that um, because they're image bearers of God, doesn't matter what your skin color is, and we're one race, the human race. Um, I have to ask myself in this situation, just as a Christian, uh, the golden rule, am I treating others the way that I want to be treated? Also, um, God's told us in Micah 6, 8, he's told you, O oh man, what is good, what the Lord desires of you, to do justice, to love kindness, to walk humbly with your God. And so I need to ask myself, is there justice happening in the world around me that I'm living in? On the other side of that, um, we believe that, that police is important. We believe that um, authority is important because we live in a fallen world, um, a dangerous world. The use of force is important. Um, Romans 13.3 says, For governing authorities are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath, on the wrongdoer. Because we live in a fallen world, um, every society needs law, and that law needs to be applied fairly. And so in this case with George Floyd, we saw injustice, right? So the governing authorities are accountable to deal with that and make the appropriate changes for the fair application of justice 
and law. God's solution to our problem is the gospel of grace and the gospel of peace. In John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his Son. And his Son is named Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a Jewish Messiah. Jesus looks, looked a lot different than me. Unfortunately, he acted a lot different than me. Um, he was perfect. He lived a perfect life. He died for our sin on a cross. He was raised again three days later to prove that God, his death satisfied the wrath of God in our place. We can now be forgiven of our sin. We can be reconciled to God through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Um, through the gospel, through this gospel of grace, um, all the dividing walls are taken down, right? So in Ephesians chapter 2, there's no more dividing wall between Jew and Gentile. Those are the two cultures that were at odds with each other, right? And in the church, in Christ church now, Jews and Gentiles meet together to worship Jesus together. There's no more dividing wall um, between sexes, men and women, between cultures. Um, and we get to, in the church, we get to celebrate this, right? We get to celebrate the different cultures, the different genders. Um, and it's all part of God's beautiful design that we get to take part in and celebrate together. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing. So just three quick takeaways today. First of all, the truth doesn't have sides. Like, don't feel like you have to take a side. Secondly, believers stand for the fair application of justice. And we need to do justice, right? That's something God requires of us. And third, we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer to all human problems. When people look to Jesus, when they put their faith in Christ, he can figure it all out for you. I can't do that. Your neighbor can't do that. A president can't do that. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, he can do that.